Benjamin Franklin said, well done is better than well said. And now pretty much everything's been said, and now it's time to get the job done. I'm sure the talking's not done yet, but the Finance Committee does clock in with a vote today, the final committee to move health care forward in Congress. Just because it's been said doesn't mean senators won't say it again. Top Line starts right now. Hello and welcome to ABCNews.com's Top Line. I'm David Chalian. And I'm Rick Klein. Each weekday we're bringing you the very latest political headlines, reporting, insight, analysis, everything you need and want to know about politics. And you can be part of that conversation at Twitter. It's twitter.com slash the note. Let us know what you think. Questions for our guests. You name it. It was about three months after the help committee voted on the bill, but here we are. A big here day. Here we are. It Kick is. us off. It is actually snow day. The only thing that we're still worried about in the finance committee is how Olympia Snow will vote. She has kept that a closely guarded secret. She was a little bit skeptical of the Congressional Budget Office this morning in testimony. We'll know in a couple hours whether she comes down and whether bipartisanship shall breathe another day. Bipartisanship. One this Republican. One. One. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Pushback. Uh, yesterday we were talking about that health industry report. The insurance industry uh, commissioned this report. We saw a Democratic pushback from the White House and their allies on Capitol Hill uh, like we haven't seen in this entire health care battle. They were really hammering away, and today they were handed a big piece of ammunition from PricewaterhouseCoopers, the, the company that did the report. They come out today saying, oh, no, no, those attacks are right. We didn't assess uh, what the new subsidies would mean, what other cost controls and, and assumptions about cost controls could possibly mean. So basically, they, they just did a worst-case scenario and, and didn't really consider some of the pieces of the uh, legislation that really would bring down costs. That's right. Uh, Republicans are still going to push this. They're going to be talking about this, that every American is going to see their health care costs go up. They're doing that even though they're, they're, at the same time they're saying that CBO is getting it wrong. CBO, they were worshiping at that Bible just a, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, now not so much. And, of course, the White House have, does have the problem that it actually, health care costs probably will go up, but, of course, they're not that's trying a, to deal with that That's another fact. issue right. for, for <laughs> another day. Cheney attacks. This time, it's Liz Cheney who is back on the offensive. She's part of a new organization launching just today that is going to put some organizational heft into the same kind of things that we've been hearing from both her and her father, the message that President Obama is weak on, na on national security. Uh, they have a little fun with a fundraising video today saying he's out there playing golf and uh, going to the uh, trying to get the Olympics for Chicago and, and having a beer summit while they're trying to figure out an Afghanistan strategy. We'll see a little bit of that in a bit. And finally today, a GOP makeover. Yes, if you were to go to GOP.com, don't go just now because we don't want you to click off our show, but uh, <laughs> later in the day, if you go to GOP.com, you will see a whole new Republican Party, or at least that's what Michael Steele, the RNC chairman, hopes you'll see. Rick, this was astonishing. You go to this new VAMP website. They want to do the Obama campaign thing, lots of social networking space, lots of bringing people into uh, their digital home. But it's all about Michael Steele right now. You go, it's his little image that dances across the screen. Uh, it's his column called What Up? And trying to get, uh, I don't know, more youth representation into the fold. It just seems to be a little bit too much about the chairman to me. It's almost bizarre. And I, I, they also highlight faces of the GOP, what they call faces of the GOP. You get a new one every time you hit refresh. I had to hit re refresh six times before I saw a white man. It was Leonidas C. Dyer. <laughs> who, of course, as you know, David, led a, an unsuccessful filibuster for a civil rights bill in 1922. Thank you. I yes. appreciate that. Also, <laughs> if you click on, as Ben Smith reported in Politico, the future uh, leadership tab, right now that's currently blank on, on the Working website, on so they're going to have to fill that in. Where's that in construction guy? We're going to begin, though, with the big health care battle and the Finance Committee vote up in the Senate today. We're joined by Ralph Nees, the CEO of the National Coalition on Healthcare, a, a centrist organization that's been in this health care fight. Um, and, and I want to begin... Uh, pegging off of this report that came out yesterday that the insurance industry had uh, paid for this report and talked about uh, how uh, the premiums will go up. Obviously, as we just said, PricewaterhouseCoopers out there saying we didn't assess everything in the bill and that could have an impact on their uh, final analysis. But with the Senate committee vote today, is this bill something that you and your coalition uh, would support in its current form? In its current form, we cannot yet support it. Uh, we applaud the chairman for getting a bill out of committee, and it will get out of committee. Uh, we applaud him for making sure that it was budget neutral. Uh, it was a heroic accomplishment going through all these many, many months of negotiations and trying to get the Republicans to be part of it. But we've got problems with affordability. Uh, we would like to see more people covered, and maybe most importantly, we think it falls, falls short 
on the cost containment issues, both the short-term cost containment issues, but more importantly, long-term cost containment. Skyrocketing cost of health care, double-digit inflation with respect to health care costs in this country. If you could look at the last 10 years, in, uh, inflation 39 percent, excuse me, inflation 29 percent, uh, wage increases 34 percent, and 120 percent with health care costs. That is not sustainable. Sustainability is the key word, and you have to have effective long-term cost containment to get that. Ralph, you've talked and written in the past about the importance of having a bi bipartisan support, not just for the passing the bill, the mechanics in the Senate, but also for maintaining support for the bill when there's supporting legislation that's going to have to happen in future years. Given that, how important is Olympia Snow today? And is that is that sort of make or break for bipartisanship? And is, is that enough to be considered bipartisan? Uh, Olympia Snow uh, is, of course, one of the two or three most important people uh, in the national government right now <laughs> in terms of what's going to happen on health care. I think she'll be with the committee or maybe abstain and try to exercise more leverage. But in the end, I believe she'll vote for the final bill. Uh, we would have loved much more bipartisanship, and uh, Max Baucus and the president have certainly tried. But the most important thing about trying for bipartisanship is that you convince the fiscally conservative Democrats that you're trying to pull out all the stops, that you really want Republicans, and the Republicans keep on rebuffing every attempt at bipartisanship, and it becomes apparent that they're going to try to deprive Barack Obama of any health care bill at all, then those so-called blue dogs, those fiscally conservative Democrats, are much more likely to go with the president. And bipartisanship, then you're saying, sort of in and of itself as a goal, is not a, a higher goal than, than getting some sort of health care. The, the, the most important thing is looking at the 47 million uninsured and the tens of millions you, of other people who are underinsured or they're afraid of losing it next week or next month. You were just talking about some concerns you have in the, in the Baucus bill about, uh, and this is what Karen Ignani of the health insurance uh, industry uh, said yesterday as well, that it doesn't cover, it doesn't get to universality uh, nearly enough. It covers about 94% yes. uh, over that 10-year period of the bill. She said she'd like to see something in the high 90s, but then you also expressed a concern about affordability. It seems to me those two went hand in hand. The reason that they went down to 94% is because they made the penalty lower so that uh, it, it, it doesn't break the bank, uh, the penalty for people, so that they actually can afford to get in. But of course, that means some people then with a lower penalty will not get in the system. That seems at odds to be both concerned, the affordability and the coverage. I'm hoping that after the show, uh, Karen Ignani and American Health Insurance uh, uh, Plans will call me because we agree about trying to get more Americans covered. We want to cover virtually everybody. However, uh, Karen Ignati and the insurance industry, in order to make sure that we cover everybody and that it's affordable, we've got to cut costs. They're not willing to really address cost containment in a serious way. They were one of the six principal players who went to the White House in May and in June and said, we can cut the rate of uh, cost increases by 1.5% per year. We can save one to two trillion dollars per year. Well, do it. Make it part of the legislation. Let's have an enforceability mechanism that says after their voluntary efforts, and voluntary efforts seldom work in civil rights or anywhere else, then we could have it enforced after five years if they tried and failed. That would be effective cost containment, and there are lots of other ways to do it. Let's work together to get you it. talk about the shortcomings that you see in the Baucus bill right now, but some of the, some of the areas to, to try to bend the curve, like the, the taxing of the Cadillac plans, for instance, got a fierce resistance over in the House. Are you concerned that this is actually going to move to the left in terms of the, in terms of the spending, and we're going to have less cost containment and, and less cost control in the final bill? I am hoping that the National Coalition on Health Care and others can minimize the taxes in both the uh, Senate bill as well as in the House bill. We spend $2.5 trillion a year on health care, as you all know. We don't have to spend $3.0 trillion or $3.5 trillion. We just have to spend the money more wisely and efficiently and fairly. So I'm hoping we can lower the taxes in both bills and have effective long-term as well as short-term cost containment. That's the secret to all of this. Ralph Nays, National Coalition on Healthcare, thank, thank you very you. much for being Thanks. here. We appreciate it.